What is up, everybody? This is Travis and Josh, and we and this is the Whiskey and Business Podcast, where we just talk about all things marketing and all things business inside of the Pacific Northwest and also applies to other areas, but we're trying to focus on this area alone because this is our area of expertise. Um, Travis, how long have you had your marketing business and your videography business in in Coeur d'Alene or surrounding areas? I've been working in the industry for about five years, just piecing together experience after experience and just building it out from there. Okay. Okay. Now, what got you into marketing? Well, once I marketed my own business and spent all of the time building the sites, building the logos, building the brand, I realized that, uh, heck, I could do this for everyone else. Right. Exactly. <laughs> um, what it, now, now this podcast, what we're going to do in the beginning of each one, we're going to have a bottle of whiskey. We're going to have one glass um, for each podcast. And we're going to review at the end um, whether we like this one or not and then kind of the notes of it. So this one, we got the Woodenville uh, Bourbon Whiskey, 90 proof. Um, so this one is a well-known one in, in our area. So this is probably in every liquor store you could possibly go to. But um, So we're going to have this one today. Um, and then this topic is just the intro for the episode. We're just going to go over kind of what to expect. And we're also going to talk about what we've seen happen during COVID from last year and then what the market is now, specifically in Coeur d'Alene, Post Falls, and the surrounding areas. Because um, it's, it's a big 180 that's kind of happened in the last year. Um, so I'll ask you first. So from 2019, let's say January, right? Mm -hmm. And um, what, what was the uh, change in your business and what you saw in this area in terms of marketing and stuff like that from right before COVID happened and then right when COVID happened and probably peak in like July when everybody kind of just shut down? Uh, what was your experience on that one? Well, in my experience, everything got very, very, very quiet for a minute because everyone was scared to spend any money. Everyone was afraid that they would blow their budget and not be able to survive a pandemic we didn't know how long would last at all. Right. But then you saw people feeling the need to remind people they still existed to keep their content going. <laughs> right. And the larger companies... Was that hard? Yeah. Yeah. yeah it was kind of... Because... Having to explain to your clients, like, listen... <laughs> We're in a pandemic, but right. don't everyone's, stop. Everyone's staring at their screens right now. You have a captive audience, literally, government-mandated captive audience. Uh, sell them. Right. <laughs> Remind them what you do. Make sure that when you reopen, you still exist and you're still on people in people's minds. Right, exactly. Now, did you see any pushback with your clientele? If Because I know what I did was right when the COVID happened, I didn't just, like, sit around like most marketing companies and hope and then hoping they don't get that cancellation email mm -hmm. cut marketing from the budget which <laughs> yeah seems exactly to be the first thing to go yeah and so what i did was i just basically emailed all my clients i said hey um this is what's going on you're paying me this and maybe we can do bring your bring your business online whether that was a furniture store whether that was an auto mechanic whether that, any business that i had in in my clientele at the moment I just called them all, switched up their marketing strategies because some of them were doing like branding and some of them were doing like local in-store visit ads, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So we basically just took their whole marketing budget, made websites that people can either purchase gift cards, purchase stuff online, um, and then if they couldn't and they still needed people in there, we had to come up with the curbside pickup and make yeah. videos and you know keep the audience engaged with their business because that, and, and, I ha and all my clients had record-breaking years. And during COVID, specifically yeah. because a lot of people pulled out. A lot of people just said, oh, you know, I'm spending $1,000 a month on marketing. I'm just going to get rid of that instantly. Mm -hmm. Whereas, well, no, I mean, most people got a substantial amount of money, like with their unemployments, you know, and how they had that, like almost, I think people were making like, you know, $900 a week at one point. Stimmy checks. Yeah, that's, yeah, the stimmy's coming out and stuff like that. Um, and, and then now, you know, like the people were still trying to hire. It was just there was a, there was a small niche of, of businesses that went, you know, that couldn't really do anything like bars. They were mm -hmm. pretty much closed down entirely. Uh, the resort businesses, you know, anything like the only thing dealing with a high crowd. There was nothing you can really do with that. Yeah. But when it ter when in terms of like items and services and stuff like that, that didn't stop. No, I think the the biggest phrase, the biggest word that I heard throughout the pandemic from the beginning of the 2019 as that whole year spread out was pivot. I heard everyone right. saying 
and really emphasizing the need to pivot. No matter what that was, every business had to figure out how to do business differently. Right. And for some businesses, that was the little push that they needed to actually embrace marketing or yep. embrace a new way of adding convenience to the consumer because a lot of the local small businesses in our area, yeah. convenience wasn't really on their radar. No. They, they were the furniture store. They were the hardware store. That's just what they were. That's what they did. That's what they They wore. got their local customers people, coming people in. Came in. <laughs> you know, they interacted every day. Yeah. Yeah, a lot of them. You, you'd be surprised. Like, so what I've seen in, like, Coeur d'Alene, it's almost like it's always, it, it's always behind, like, three to five years of trends in other tri-cities right mm -hmm. so like it's more old school here still which is awesome the owners are usually inside the business handshake um, business <laughs> yeah handshake business you know what i mean so that's not the case in most areas so you know for me coming from you know california and stuff like that and having to market out there totally different demographic out here so i you know but it's easier to appeal to the audience because everybody's on facebook right out here right. facebook is key you got the trade groups, you got you got the North Idaho groups, you got all this stuff. People engage out here, you know, more yeah. than ever online. Yeah, absolutely. And Facebook's like created a level playing field for people right. where <laughs> even though all of the huge corporations are just drowning like millions of dollars into boosted ads, millions of dollars into advertising, any mom and pop shop can start advertising and actually be just as relevant if right. they do it right. Yeah, that's the key though. <laughs> <laughs> They do it right. So, you know, most of the time I see, like, when I take over an ad account or something on Facebook, it's like I go through the ads. It's like 40 million boosted posts. I'm like, oh, man, like, that's, you know, like with boosting, you know, you know, the uh, mm -hmm. boosting is that sexy button on their page that says, hey, you want to promote your business, click this button and you're just magically going to make money. Oh, you're boosted. There's nothing that can go. You, you are boosted. Yeah, nothing that can go wrong <laughs> at that point, right? So, you know, and, and then, but doing it right is actually going into your business manager, going into the back end, creating conversion campaigns, like doing all this stuff. A-B testing. Yeah, A-B testing and, yeah. and video content, different kinds of carousel ads or whatever. Not boosted posts. <laughs> and uh, because that's Facebook's way of just saying, Hey, you don't advertise, so I just want you to give us some money just yeah. to benefit off of a little bit. If, 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 in my opinion. Yeah. Well, then there's no call to action half the time. It's like, hey, we we had a dog come into our shop today. Oh, look, here's the dog. Oh, we had a dog here. Oh, there, there was a dog here. That's awesome. And everyone's like, oh, thumbs up. <laughs> right. <laughs> right. And that's where the post ends. It's like, oh, sweet, yep. nice, nice. Yeah. You guys met a dog. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> exactly. What's the ROI? <laughs> right. So. Right. That's the difference, you know what I mean? And But yeah, in every platform is like that, like Google too, you know? Mm -hmm. I've seen so many Google ad accounts here that I've ran that just like either a Google rep created it, right? <laughs> so that's like just the same thing as a boost button on Facebook. Right. Um, or their uh, marketing company before just had a bunch of broad keywords. So for example, I, had a, I have a client that, um, and I don't think I told you this before, but I had an automotive client and we were running at, and they were running ads for like a year. So they spent like $36,000 for the full year of ads. So when I got the account, I was thinking, Psh, I have a lot of data to go off of. You know, this is going to be super good to build out. I have, you know, all the metrics. I get the account and for like a half a year, they're paying for Uber, you know, Lyft, taxi services, um, just random keywords that had nothing to do with auto mechanics. It had to be dealing with cars, but it's because the marketing company before me put a bunch of broad keywords. And then so Google eventually started running and testing some additional, you know, keywords and getting clicks and no one was managing it. Right. So they were spending like 15, $20 a click on that at times. And on their end, the Google setting out the automatic reports to him. So he's like stoked, right? He's mm -hmm. stoked. You know, he's making, he's like, wow, like I got 10,000 impressions. I got, you know, uh, 500 clicks in this week or whatever. But it doesn't line up with the business yeah. and people coming in. And then he's spending thousands and thousands of dollars. Well, I think what people forget is Google and Facebook, they are businesses. Like, the bottom line is them getting that money, mm -hmm. regardless of the success of their clients, which right. are the businesses. They are not invested in the success of those businesses. Right. They want it to succeed, so you keep giving them money. But all they have to do is say, hey this is how many people saw the ad and then you're like oh okay cool 
but they are not actually <laughs> right. strategically helping you. Like they're not responsible for your success. No, no they're no. the platform of success. Right. They're just not responsible to give you that success you need. They get the same amount of money whether you succeed or whether you fail. Right. And I mean, they have some incentive to make you succeed, but they are not invested in like a marketing right. company would be. Or a yes. media professional would be. <laughs> yeah, there's a difference. It's a ma- it's a matter of how much you spend, right? So like anything below like a hundred thousand dollars a year, they ain't even gonna look at you, right. right? You're you're in that pool of people that they don't care whether you fail or not. You're in now you so you have to make sure your ads are good. Like for example, I have you know I had to get my ad account to above a hundred thousand dollars in ad spend for a year and have multiple multiple um, high quality converting campaigns. Now I have a Facebook rep, but now they're invested into my my mm-hmm. account where when I'm doing something wrong or there's something better, they're going to tell me right away because now they know, well, this account spends hundreds of thousands of dollars a year. Yeah. But before that, I was just another number in the pool of advertisers. Right. Right? Yeah. So there's a certain point that you get to like that whole pool and it's hard to get to that. I mean, for just a business alone, like, I have a manager account. so. My ad spend goes with all the all the accounts I manage, versus now local business. That's going to be hard to spend hundred thousand dollars a month, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and or per year even. You know what I mean? So it's just a little bit different um, when you're dealing with uh, the low. When I say lower budget, I'm not necessarily saying low budget, but a low budget to these advertising uh, platforms is anything below a hundred thousand dollars per year. So you have to get a good campaign, and there's. Not a lot of competition out here. No. <laughs> like, I think uh, every campaign that I run and I manage and I create out here for a client skyrockets. And their cost per click goes way down. Right. I'm sure you've seen the same thing. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it's the, it's very important that you actually put it together the right way. Because, like I said, bottom line, you're still spending the money. So right. Facebook and Google, they... They will give you, they are, they're businesses, but they do not replace a marketing professional. They are a tool to be used by a marketing professional. Yes. And yes. if you can figure it out, you may have some success, but the, it's a tool. Yes. And just like holding a, a an expensive camera or right. using an expensive piece of equipment, it is a tool that can bring a lot of positive results if you're using it right. Yeah, but you can still buy a $20,000 camera and not know how to use it. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> so you got the flashy camera, but you, you have no idea how to get the color right, the gamma right, the, the exposure, nothing. Right? <laughs> right, right. Well, it's like in my world, it's like, what, we're paying you that much to hit record and stand there with? No, no, no. <laughs> there, there's, there's a lot more to it. Trust yeah. me. Your iPhone is great. <laughs> Your iPhone is fantastic. It takes very good video, but you are paying for this specialty right. experience. <laughs> yes, this nice, you know, five, six thousand dollar camera <laughs> that could shoot in any light and any exposure settings you can imagine. I mean, Versus I your mean, iPhone, <laughs> we'll do just fine for, but it's not going to make you money. Right, right. I mean, I'll, I'll hand you my expensive camera. You can rent it, but I, I do not guarantee <laughs> the results yeah. will be the same. Exactly. <laughs> have you had it. anybody? Um, have you? So there is one thing though. When I first started, I had like so, or not first started, but when I was uh, before I had my you know ten thousand dollar rig, right? I had a, uh, a two thousand dollar camera, and then my secondary camera was an iPhone eleven Pro Max, right? Yeah. Those are good cameras. Have you have have you ever experienced any pushback of clients being like, <laughs> you know, I paid you two thousand dollars to come here and you have one nice camera, but why are you using a phone? Yeah, yeah, I had one back when I had like a little Nikon backup camera that I mounted mm-hmm. up on the tripod because it had the best built-in zoom. Right. It was for some some random social thing at the at the fair, and you know it was. This lady came up to me. Their rep was just like, well, I thought we were paying for a professional. That's not a very good camera. <laughs> and I was like. I had to do it. I was like, y- yeah, but, you know, it's not a shaky iPhone from the crowd. <laughs> Believe me, whether the size of the camera is huge or not, 
as long as the person who's using it knows how to use it. Right. And at that point, I think I had multi-cam on the thing. And oh, okay. She was picking out one camera on the top and the very back zoomed in. And she's <laughs> just like, well, I thought, I thought that you, for that much, you know, and it was like that much as in like... 350 bucks or something. Oh like, my gosh. <laughs> I thought for Jeez. that much we would have a bigger camera. And I'm like, listen, you're getting a deal here. <laughs> this is a nice enough camera for, for your needs. Right. <laughs> Trust me, you'll be fine with the finished product. Don't push back on price when I'm at the actual event, please. <laughs> right. Yeah, that's, uh, that's a little rough. <laughs> yeah. <was. laughs> iPhones have a big stigma with professional, right? Right. But what's funny is you can go on YouTube anywhere. And even the, so I have the iPhone 12 now, mm -hmm. Pro Max. That camera does better than five, $6,000, you oh, know, yeah. it, Sony Alpha cameras or, you know, Canon R5s. Like this, this thing will do better in, in a lot of cases yeah. than yeah. one of the, and then those, you know, super professional rigs. Although you don't get a lot of the control. That's the only difference, right? Like right. Well, you buy those expensive cameras for the control. I remember one time I was filming with a bank and we were in the VP's office and we were waiting to film all of the staff on his couch. And I had all the lighting set up. I had all the audio set up and we're, we're set to go. And um, it was cold outside. So I brought my camera in and the whole lens fogged. And we're, <laughs> we're sitting in the VP's office waiting uh, five minutes pass, ten <laughs> minutes pass. I'm like, okay, you know what? Screw you didn't it. have any anti-fog on you? <laughs> no. I'm like, okay, screw it. And I looked at the BV VP. I'm like, don't tell anyone this, but we have the lighting, we have the sound, and I took out my brand new iPhone, put it up on the tripod, and I'm like, this is going to shoot in 4K, 60 frames per second. Right. As long as everything else is in place and you have someone who knows what they're doing, this is going to substitute out my $3,500, you know, $5,500 camera right. right now because I want to film and I don't want to take up your office any longer. Right. <laughs> yeah. Trust me, it's going to be fine. Yeah. Don't tell me when I use an iPhone because <laughs> they will lose their minds. <laughs> I know. I, I, think, I think it's just the phone nature. Right, I just don't right. think they realize that you're basically paying $1,000 for a camera. Right. But this camera is so dang powerful that it beats out a lot of the six, seven thousand dollar cameras. Well, how many millions of dollars went into developing right. the perfect camera for any situation? Exactly. Like phones are more than phones. They've put so much work into yep. making it better than any other phone. Yep. And you know, all of those phones are competing <laughs> to have the best camera ever. And what's crazy is these days it's it, just like it's a level playing field, like equipment. People can acquire equipment that can do a professional job once they train themselves how to do a professional job. Right. Yeah. There's a lot that goes into just having the camera itself. Yeah, you know absolutely. I mean? I mean, obviously, we're just talking about the cameras. But uh, so bouncing back to um, what we were talking about with COVID, we went over like before, what have you seen this year alone? So 2021, every, you know, I know there's a lot of states that are still going through it. You know, mm -hmm. like I think Washington is going back to stage two. Um, California, same thing. New York, same thing. Like all these bigger cities, right? And still a lot of small cities. But for some reason, Idaho and 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 specifically Coeur d'Alene and the surrounding areas, we haven't been hit too hard in terms of COVID, mm -hmm. even like during it in 2020. But like this year, <laughs> this year, so... So I'll talk about what I've seen, but like I want to hear what you've seen so far as of January. Well, I've seen a huge change and uptick in how people do business. While before I felt like every single client I had to educate on right. the importance of marketing, because like you said, we were five years behind and heck, three years ago, I'd venture to say we were 15 years behind up here <laughs> right. when compared to Los Angeles and actual like huge cities and right. stuff. But the the COVID times really kind of pushed us into the digital age. And I feel like what's happening right now and what's about to happen is a big boom in the digital marketing age because everyone has seen the value of convenience, the value right. of being able to log on to a call wherever you are face to face through Zoom or whatever platform. Right. And it's changed the minds of well, the consumers were already there because they were on social media and they were on Google and they would search like that. Right. But it's changed the minds of the businesses where they've had to fiddle around and figure out how to draw people in through online, through convenience. And now I think that marketing is going to play a 
much larger role in our community. Oh, 100%. Yeah, that's a that's a good take because it has. And you've seen it. So <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> um, so, like, my business, you know, quadrupled in COVID because – when you're when there's the when there's the go-getters, they find the go-getter marketing companies, right? Mm-hmm. So what I've seen though, the trend for this year for businesses listening, business owners, um, the trend is that search results are up around sixty to eighty percent for things to do in Coeur d'Alene from 2019. So the statistics from 2019 pre-COVID, mm-hmm. there was a lot of people, right? Co- Coeur d'Alene was popping. I mean, summers there was you know, tens of thousands of people coming here. Yeah. But the search results and the trends from compared to 2019 and then so far in 2021 is up 60 to 80%. And so with that said, that means that there is going to be a drastic change of visitors here, especially because of Washington, whereas Washington's shutting back down. Coeur d'Alene just, just came out with state that we're in stage four and we're pretty much all cylinders firing on any event, right? Right. So there is no limitation of what you can do at this moment out here. So the amount of people that are actually going to, to come here, it's just going to benefit everybody in Coeur d'Alene, right? All the businesses. Whether you like it or not, whether like, I know there's a lot of locals that are like, oh, psh, we're getting overrun, you know, like whatever, you know <laughs> right. what I mean? Um, there's just so many pe- there's just so much opportunity for businesses out here especially on the strip that are going to benefit from this influx of people and that's why it's going to be important to be on Google because what w- everybody can say this they go to a new area they fly to a do, to uh, you know say they go fly to Tennessee or they go to New York or or even go out of the country what's the first thing you do you pull out your phone you google map wherever the heck you want to go yeah you you build out your itinerary right, right. then and there figure out what you know, businesses are there. Exactly. So if your business isn't running Google ads, but yet you know exactly what people are going to do, they're going to be on Google. Yeah. So wouldn't you, so that's why I try to tell all the businesses like, well, if there's going to be an uptick of people, plus it's the summer, this is where you're going to make all your money, right? Why won't you be on the platform and why won't you start doing some marketing that's going to put you in front of those people right away? The people that are well, searching for your specific thing. Yeah. Well, Google isn't just a business. It's a, or it's not just a search engine. It's a directory. Right. Especially with Google Maps and all of yes. those things. If you have a Google Maps listing and an ad and you have good SEO, so your site is actually up there when this person searches for your service right. or for things to do, then you are, you're firing on all cylinders. Exactly. You know, you actually will draw people in immediately when they try to find what they want to do. Well, plus and, people are, are people in general on phones are lazy. Yeah. They don't want to do much scrolling. They don't want to do much. They want things to be right in front of their faces. That's what they're used to, right? Mm-hmm. Facebook has definitely helped, you know, helped uh, train the mind of people to just want things right away. Amazon, same thing. So in terms of Google, they, you know, business will be like, well, yeah, I'm like number seven <laughs> on the search results, right? And I'm like, well, do you really think any of those people – Maybe one out of like a thousand people will like scroll to the seventh line. No, like they they want the if you're not in that first three column, you're done. You lost them. Right. And what makes those those what twelve before they switch to the next page? You know. Oh, good luck on the next page. Too. <laughs> right. Right. You know how, how what what makes it so you are going to pass up all those businesses to get down to number seven? Right. You know, I'll, I'll actually pass by ads a lot because ads are a lot all the time really spammy. You know, well that's but, but that's because you know ads. Most people <laughs> brush right, over right. that, right? They, they see the ad, they click on it. Yeah. Plus, I have ad blocker added on my Wi-Fi, yeah. so it immediately pulls up <laughs> cannot access site. I'm like, what? I just want to click. The yeah. Ad. <laughs> yeah. So, Mark, yeah, we're a little bit different. We notice those things, right? As a business right. owner, you'll you know that those are ads. I scroll down to the people who have done the work to actually get up to the high <laughs> Google rating where they are. Right. They have enough people actually. Their SEO is really stellar and whatnot, yeah, too. They have enough social stuff feeding in. Right. Their business has been driven up to the top because they've done the work and I know their quality. Right. And most people, whether they realize that's what they're thinking, that's what they're thinking when they're scrolling. They're going to choose the top because they think that's the, you know, ranked out of 10. Right. <laughs> right. And, but that's what I'm saying is like, it's, it, when, when in terms of marketing, if you, any type of business, there's a starting point always. Like, there's always a standard starting point, and that's just Google, right? Yeah. Um, or vice versa, Facebook. 
you know, if your audience, if you're like a women's product or like, you know, um, you know, a gym or whatever, Facebook and Instagram are probably going to be your best bet other than Google. But mm-hmm. um, there's always a starting point. And what I've seen is the pushback of like, you know, because like my service fee is $500 a month. I charge to manage the account, and create the ads. Sometimes that's a lot of money to somebody. And they're like, dang, like, why am I, char- why am I paying you $500? Well, it's like, well, I mean, that's actually cheap. You know, right in the grand scheme of things, because I don't take a percentage of your ad spend, especially nationals, a national company, compared yeah, to national costs, exactly. Like that yeah. is very, <laughs> very inexpensive, right? And that's just because I know what I'm doing. I have a, I go for volume, so um, I can do things really fast because I've learned how to do it really fast. So it doesn't take me as much time. I can charge less and just, just and they can just pay what, what, um, what I'm worth at that point. But um, and then they have to pay for some ad spend. But what they think is because because there's been a lot of marketing companies um, in this area that have screwed a lot of people, I've, I've heard many, 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 many stories. Mm-hmm. Of like, oh, yeah, we, they do this. I don't know what they're doing. Or, they oh, they didn't do a good job or whatever. No they're afraid to – they don't understand that if you set up a really good advertising campaign, no matter what platform you use, you're going to make your money back on your ad spend. Right. So if I'm saying I recommend you spend a thousand dollars a month, it's going to take it over the course of the whole month. You're going to get that money back, whether one way or the other. You're either going to break even. You're going to get a customer. Their lifetime value is a thousand dollars. You know, whatever the case may be, it's going to come out to it because you're grabbing the people yeah. that are searching for your stuff. They they want to buy from you. It's because you know how to use the tools. Exactly. Like exactly, and use them right. Right, <laughs> you're, you're not you're not trying to hoe out a garden with the hoe backwards. Yeah, <laughs> scraping the ground, not doing anything. Exactly with a fork or something, right? <laughs> you will get results if you put the money in, especially mm-hmm. with a professional who can actually put it in correctly. Exactly, you know, and but so it's all about like the investment. It's like you have a business out here, right? Take advantage of the amount of people that are becoming this summer. This summer is going to be insanely crazy. Um, you know, there's going to be live events. There's going to be tons of stuff to do. People want stuff. Like, I mean, on, even on the weekends, you've seen it. The weekends have like tens of thousands of people, right? Yeah. I'm like, holy moly, like the, like the whole downtown, it's not even summer yet, right? And I hear it at night. All the bars are, you know, are going off, you know, like they're getting max capacity. I'm like, geez, man, like how, as a business owner, how do you not see this metric coming in? Why won't you want to grab some of that pool? You know, put your hand into the pot of people and scoop out some, right? Because you can guarantee, if even if you're not doing it, someone else is. Yeah, yeah. The way I've always looked at it is the first person to do it or the first few to actually do it are going to be way ahead of everyone else. Right. And if you're not doing it, then you will fall by the wayside. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I mean, we are looking at yep. a huge, huge business boom a lot of people all coming in, a lot of things just expanding and yep. everyone just trying to get back to normal. Yep. But there's a new normal happening. Yep. The, things are not going to be the same. They could be better. And exactly. that is our responsibility. Yes. If you, if first get find you and on Google. And this is their best friend. Yes. Absolutely. Anybody moving here, this is their best friend. Yeah. So getting on anything that dealing with this, they ain't going to read a newspaper, right? They're not used to that. People people moving here like, out here, the locals are used to getting papers, getting, you know, whatever. Right. But yeah. the amount of people that moved here, because even even in, during COVID, of people that are working remotely in other states, moving here with their income, they're used to Googling absolutely everything. Yeah. And uh, consumers are merciless. Right. They will not take into account that, oh, well, they just didn't really want to. It's, <laughs> it's your right. responsibility to be found in the places that you can be found, to have exactly. something there to find. Even if you're not running marketing campaigns to really like embrace the best, if you don't have a Facebook or a website, <laughs> Good do, luck. do you, I, do you I, exist? <laughs> I, I won't go to a restaurant if I can't look up the menu. Right, exactly. Like I won't even consider using a service if I log onto their website and it boots me out a couple times or I can't find the call us button. Right, or it's an unsecured <laughs> website that tr- that right. doesn't that doesn't uh, keep my information secure. It doesn't I'm not going to do any mobile. of that. It doesn't, you know, like it's 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 become the business's responsibility to the consumer right. to have accessibility. And to play and, off of the 
um, impatientness. Yeah, and the consumers will not have patience or mercy no. if you are not playing ball. Exactly. <laughs> Click on your website, it loads for three seconds, they're off. Right. It didn't load in 0.6 seconds, it loaded in three, so they're off. Yeah, oh, th- this website Too long. must be broken. This must not re- be a real exactly. business. Oh, well, well, I don't know how f- <laughs> they found your website if it's not on Google, but they found it and they, they're off. <laughs> right, and it's real. Like, yeah. like I'm telling you, when I, when I tell people, like, hey, make sure your website loads in less than three seconds, they're like, what? What do you mean? Are you sure? Like, why three seconds, right? I'm like, <laughs> oh, that's literally when most people will leave, you know? Right. And they don't believe me until they see the bounce rates at 88%. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. dude, your Google Analytics are saying that, that you're. That's something this guy can track. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, dude, <laughs> he, he you're, will you're. Check it. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> legitimately, they they logged on to home and either something offended them or it took too long to load and they went right back <laughs> out. They went and out. Went down to the next one on Google. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And yeah, all that stuff's like hardcore evidence. Like I'm not just shoot. I'm not just. I'm not just saying a bunch of random shit just for no reason, right? right. I'm not just like spewing out a bunch of like sales tactic, whatever. Like you know, some BS. people do. Like some people do. Like some people. I'm do. like, dude, like I've 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 built. I think over the course of my career, I've built like 150 to 190 websites, right? Right. I've built a lot of websites, so I've done a lot of tracking for those types of things, and yeah. If your website's not loading within like three seconds, it's like usually an eighty percent or higher bounce rate, and it's <laughs> and it's all there. So when they're like when they're like, nah, like we get like four thousand people to my website, I'm like, but you realize that you have an eighty ninety percent bounce rate, so you're literally getting, I don't know, like ninety of those people, right? Right. You know, like, or you know, even like oh, maybe two hundred or whatever, but like. Your bounce rate is so high that, like, yeah, cool, you got traffic. But that just means that many people clicked on your website, and then all of them friggin' hopped off. So you're selling a book, and people have looked at the cover of your book at least a thousand times. <laughs> right. But only three people have actually opened the book. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. And it's it, it's funny, you know, but these are, like, things that, like, you know, obviously the, the, the general business owner won't know these things, right? Right. But in in it in, 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 and I... I like to do the like like doing rebuttals. I don't like rebuttal people just to sell. I sell. I, I tell them things of like these are the statistics. This is what the you know what it, what it is. But they've heard that from multiple multiple marketing companies that maybe don't know what they're talking about. But they right. take the talking points of the gurus, or they talk to somebody in marketing, and then they just basically regurgitate what they said to sell a product, and well, they don't know how to do it. Well, those gurus are found are able to be found on Google, right? <laughs> so <laughs> they they Google exactly. the talking points, and then now they're a marketing professional. Exactly. So uh, that's Which, one of the headaches. Have, and, and for the last topic, we'll go into that. Have you? What are your biggest? Um, I guess rejections when it comes to marketing. Like, say you get a new client, or or you miss a client in that aspect. What is their rejection, or 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 anything that they're scared about when it comes to pulling the trigger on buying a marketing package or buying you know a media package or whatever? I'd say they don't believe in the marketing. They don't think it's going to benefit them. They can't really picture it actually making a difference or they say oh well we're already doing fine (laughs) well we we, we're we're busy enough we don't need to actually market or do that which that's hard and i don't usually get into it with them but my immediate thought is well you're not pressing forward or planning for the future if you're already fine that you have yeah that and good luck when the market you know goes down or when one of your competitors actually starts doing what is recommended. Right. <laughs> then suddenly all of your business that, oh, we have too much business already, will slowly go to whoever is doing what they should and could do. Right. Yeah. I have heard that a lot. So it's like, yeah, you know, uh, I can't I can't do the marketing because, you know, I'm already at max capacity. I'm like, then hire. You know, right. I know That's it is right. hard to hire. Like, <laughs> there is an excuse now, right? Yeah, yeah. Where... It is hard to find good work, but there's always a way. As a business owner and entrepreneur, you just you 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 just get used to saying yes, right? Because you'll always figure it out. It's just if you if you're complacent, that's where it becomes scary, right? Pivot. Exactly. You're like you don't want to be accustomed to what you're at because then if it starts to go because then your life starts to kind of like even out to that playing field. But then when it goes lower, now you're freaking out, right? right? 
because you're not in an uncomfortable position at all the time. You're always in a comfortable position. Like, like what I do is I always put myself in super uncomfortable positions uh, for myself, not like, you know, bad, but like in business, because I always want to be ahead of the game. I want to grow, whatever the case may be. So when I go to a business owner and they say, yeah, we're at max capacity, we can't do any marketing. I'm like, no, you can. Okay, maybe I don't do Google ads for you, right? But mm -hmm. maybe you start working on content for branding. Maybe you start doing some um, SEO. Maybe you start doing some stuff for the future. So when you do flip the switch and you hire more people or you get somebody on your team, you're ready to go, right, on, the, on that aspect. That's what I would do. Yeah. But they just kind of shut out marketing in general, and they're like, no, nah, no, nah, I don't want to do anything because I'm, I'm comfortable with them. Well, on that note, like every job I've ever worked before I started my company, I was always looking to how – far up can I work? What is the next step? What is the next thing that I can do to be the best me to actually succeed in the best way that I can? Right. And if you become complacent and you stop actually pursuing future goals, then like you said, that dip happens and you're not building towards anything. <laughs> right. Then you're just falling with no backup plan. Exactly. You, not only do you have a backup plan to catch up everything that may fall, but you should always be working up to the higher tier because then yes. you fall you fall to where you were before when you weren't even pursuing <laughs> anything more. Right. You're Adapt taking baby steps. Pivot. You might fall, but you're at that same level. Yeah. But if you fall and you're down below right. that level. <laughs> if you fall from here, you're going to go way further than if you've built yourself from here and you fall straight back to where you were. Exactly. You know, you should always be looking for the next step, the next best thing, what you can do to be better because – even the consumers recognize when a person is not applying themselves or trying to be the best they can be. Right. And once a competitor is, then you will Dude, have that fall. Dude, takes you out. Takes You'll you have out. That fall. <laughs> I know it is funny when you go to like a Google listing and they have like 240p photos and and uh, and then like random other like uh, user generated photos that have nothing to do with their business. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and they expect people to just get directions to that place. <laughs> or, or, they, or they have Shutterstock photos without Shutterstock watermark removed. <laughs> yeah, yeah that's like, a good one too. Yeah, um, you come here for waxing and you see the person being waxed with the Shutterstock <laughs> The nice, watermark. nice scene and everything. And you go to the place, you're like, what the heck? It's like, is this a meme? No, nope, nope. This is their marketing campaign. <laughs> yeah, that, uh, that is always <laughs> funny. But, um, Awesome. So we're at the end of the segment. So, um, so we had, we were, we were sipping on the Woodenville bourbon whiskey, 90 proof. What did you think about this? I thought it was really smooth. Like, yeah, it was not bad, huh? Yeah. I mean, I, I wouldn't even, I think it's high enough quality that I wouldn't even introduce a, a mixer or anything to it. Just a nice little sip. Right. No ice. Smooth. No ice. It is straight up, just, you know, just straight smooth. I think, um, it's not as like harsh like in bourbon. Yeah. You get this like medicine-y feeling when they're mm. super when they're super strong. I know 90 proof is a lot, but it's like this is more of like the bite of a rye, but in a bourbon. Yeah. Yeah, that was my that was my thoughts too. It's just very smooth. It's not like sweet, but it's not bitter. Right. It's that perfect line. Yeah, it's of, pretty dang good. Yeah. For the price, I think it was like uh I think it was like 40 bucks, 45 bucks or something for the bottle. But uh yeah, that's a super good whiskey, so I'd highly recommend this one. Um next week I'm going to bring I'm going to bring my all all-time favorite. So, uh stay tuned for that one if you guys are into whiskey. Um I'll have a good recommendation, but yeah, yeah, so this was the first episode, so pretty much every week um, this is what we're going to be doing. We're going to be having an episode coming out that's going to be all about marketing. So if you have any comments, questions, or anything you want us to work on on a topic on the next episode, feel free to just leave a comment down below on the video. Um, reach out to us, DM Travis at Pulse Productions and myself at Miller Media Co. Uh, we'll be able to take any questions or anything you want us to go over. We also, it'll be fun too, um, having business owners uh, DM us and say, hey, can you talk about our business on the podcast and kind of do an audit? Yeah. We can prepare for that and then kind of help you out on the podcast and maybe it'll help out a lot of other people also in the area for business. Absolutely. Um, so whatever the case may be, um, just reach out to us. Our podcast is all going to be dealing with marketing and business. And um, whiskey. And whiskey. Yes. <laughs> whiskey, whiskey. So um, thanks for tuning in, guys, and we appreciate it. We'll look forward to you guys tuning in on the next week's episode. Thanks. Thanks.